Hello everyone, and welcome to another A Thousand Ways tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to apply text wrap options to your document depending on the type of image or object you'll be using. In previous tutorials, I've shown you how to convert an image into a shape using Pathfinder options as well as creating custom shapes using both the pen and ellipse tool. As you can see here on your screen, we have a document already set up which features a text wrap around a circular image. Now, there's more than one way to apply text wrap. So I'm going to go up to this untitled document here where we have an image sitting under text. Now, if you want to know the document settings I'm using, Simply refer to the description below and create your new document. Now we're going to bring up our text wrap options with our image selected. And if you do not see text wrap available, simply go to window and click text wrap. Now our default option would be no text wrap. So our text, of course, would sit on top of our image. Now, instead, we're going to select Wrap Around Bounding Box. With this option, you'll see that our text wraps beautifully around this image. The only problem with this option is that it only works if your image is within a rectangle or a square. For instance, we'll scroll down to a document where we have a circular image. I'm going to click this and click wrap around bounding box. As you can see here, instead of our text wrapping around the actual frame of the image, it's wrapping around the box it's contained in. And it doesn't look right because we get these big white spaces. So instead, we will select the third option, which will be wrap around object shape. And as you can see, our text automatically wraps around the frame of the image. In certain areas, you'll see that the text is really tight. So you could come down to the section below the options and use these arrows to bump up the padding around your frame. So I'm going to click the up arrow twice. And a line will appear which shows you the space between both your text and your frame. Now going back up to the first page, I'm going to select our image here. And now for the fourth option, which is jump object. As you can see, we have these very thin areas of text and it looks very weird. It will be hard for someone to read this area since there's only about three words on each line. Instead of having that awkward scenario for our readers, you would choose the fourth option of jump object, which now your text will show above and below your image instead of all the way around. So now you won't have text squeezing in between the sections beside your image. <clears throat> and personally, this looks way better. Now for the fourth option, it basically brings all your text above your image. So let's just say we had this image below here, and it was possibly full width across. So. I'll just apply a fitting to fill the frame. And you wanted your text to appear above. Now you see this automatically happens and we have our first option available. But this one pretty much does the same thing. And it's very easy to do. I barely ever use this option. I don't really find it that intriguing unless for whatever reason I don't want text to show under my image. I would say that this will most likely work if you want an image with a caption 
and it's pretty close to the bottom of your page. Uh, I'm not really sure. But once again, I barely ever use this option. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that it was a great learning experience for you guys. And I hope to see you in the next A Thousand Ways tutorial.